uh, thank you all for uh, giving us your time and your smart thinking uh, today. So we're just going to do a short kind of action plan wrap up here. Uh, we had two objectives uh, for today. One was to get a, 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 broad, uh, a broader group engaged in this uh, issues, that, the issues that we're dealing with around climate in the Bay Area and, and about the CRI. And so we're, we think that that objective is, is being met. We, we've enjoyed the conversations that you've, you've had. And the second objective was to start to get uh, more concrete ideas from you uh, as to what could the CRI take on. So what we're going to do quickly here, uh, nothing's going to get figured out today, but we want to understand just a little bit better uh, what were some of the key ideas from, from each of the sessions, and then Bill's going to come up and we're going to talk about next steps and how we, how we turn the many good ideas and your engagement into something very real over the next couple months that will move forward. Uh, and we may talk a little bit there if you want to uh, about a kind of governance and structure and funding and, and those kind of uh, operational issues as well. So um, just a few minutes. This is usually the deadliest time of anything when you try and do report backs. We've all been through some. There should be a parody made of <laughs> report backs. Uh, we've all done them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I walked right into that one, Alex. <laughs> Thanks. Where is Chabot again? <laughs> Way up on the hill. Um, so let's, let's uh, do you know, a few minutes, just hit some highlights here, because we're going to go away and digest all of this. We're going to put it, uh, we're going to turn it into a, a, a document that you can see, and we'll put it on the web and, and send it to you as well. Plus, I've got all of your sheets that were filled out at the tables and by individuals, and so we're going to process all of that. But just for fun, um, Grant, since uh, Greg left uh, and had to go uh, moderate a whole panel on sea level rise at Commonwealth Club, will you uh, give us just a little bit on the, uh, and maybe uh, you could even walk over there. Um, yours is on that side for the um, bay and coastal flooding. Jeremy, are you here too? I hate to call, call people out. Here we go. Is Jeremy here? Is he gone? Yeah. I think he's gone. Call okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. I actually didn't look at this yet, so I'm going to take a quick look. <laughs> so some some of the uh, some of the key things that came up. These are the circles here that you know that came up, and we were we were talking about you know the role of the CRI, things that could happen, and and one of the things that I kept coming back to. So I'll start there as scenario development and scenario planning. And the need really for um, some commonly held visions of, of what the future holds, that we can engage cross-sector, interdisciplinary conversations in a way that has some traction. Uh, what, what I find right now is that there is no common vision, really, um, even among people who have been working on the same projects together for a couple of years, like Our Coast, Our Future, we've, we've engaged uh, 200 or more stakeholders in pretty intensive discussions, workshops, and we're still learning how different our concepts are of what the future might hold. So some, some kind of production of scenarios that are grounded in science and um, believable, plausible, and vetted, and sort of coming out of or sort of arising from the stakeholder group would be um, very powerful, and then and then putting those into a framework where we're actually using them to help um, take action, make decisions. Um, and the point was made that we have to start making, we have to start taking action. It, uh, what's going to happen um, in the face of uncertainty and and sort of no shared vision is inaction. That's what's happening right now. Okay, which is the worst thing. That, that's definitely the worst choice. Um, we talked about uh, sort of ways of handling um, the sort of the idea of, of change, the new normal, and, and it was sort of um, articulated that we need to not think of, um, I forget the way it was said, but basically think of process. Think of, we need to be adaptable and flexible. Uh, we can't be sort of obviously stuck with some idea of how 
uh, some fixed state of how the world is. We need to be managing for um, change and process uh, and get, get our audience, our stakeholder groups um, used to that idea, which is kind of a scary idea. Um, let's see, we have this idea of co-production that came up a couple times today that I saw, which I think is critical. Um, and that I already said, but basically getting stakeholders to actually help um, uh, specify what the models are that will be needed. You know, where are the places that decisions are being made? Actually, what is the decision? What are the decisions that are needing to be informed? And getting those into the science. So um, CRI apparently has a commitment to this, which is great. And uh, I think that'll make a huge difference. Um, the moving target thing is here. We already talked about that. Uh, I think there's an idea that we need more, sort, sort of an authoritative um, set of data, like the scenarios that I was talking about, but also just sort of removal of, of there's a sort of, there's a, uh, there's a problem right now where basically anybody, there's a cottage industry around, around climate modeling, basically. So any consulting firm that wants to can create whatever reality they want to um, for whatever client. And, you know, just if there's enough money they'll make the model for that. And um, not, to, I mean, it's not quite that bad probably, but um, CRI could definitely serve as an authority for, certainly for the region um, and, and lend credibility and, and at least some sort of uh, uh, benchmarks. I'm not gonna go through every single one of these. Also, sediment management, that was a cool one. So there's this idea. <laughs> <laughs> so sediment is, is a big deal obviously in, in, in uh, in the Bay Area for, for ensuring the tidal marshes and natural systems will um, be able to sustain themselves. And, and, and um, basically what we're looking for is nature-based solutions uh, to flood protection as much as possible. So I talked about you know, this need to recognize that we are part of the ecosystem. This ecosystem that we're in is amazing and it sustains us. And um, the stability of that system is what makes it possible to thrive here. So any, some of the ways that we're going to keep that going are finding ways to help nature do its thing. And sediment management is a big one. But in any case, there's probably other examples, too, where we need to figure out exactly how that can work. Like, how do you actually get sediment where it needs to be, and how do you um, do that, given the current policy constructs and that sort of thing? It's, very, it's, it's illegal to do some of the experiments that we really need to be able to do right now. So, <laughs> so those are some of the challenges. That's great, Grant. Thank you. So, Stephanie, uh, you're going to walk us through the other morning one. Just, you know, you, you all tried to group some of these. Um, give us three or four, you know, three or four highlights from the uh, low-carbon economy uh, group in the morning. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> one of the major things was uh, having the CRI function as the information and knowledge hub. Um, three parts to that hub would be gathering the data, hosting the information and the distribution of the information. Some key points brought up about gathering the data is uh, CRI being a, a point to uh, gather diverse communities for understanding di diverse priorities. So the difference between ac academic priorities, business priorities, community priorities. Um, one is uh, flushing out the conversation surrounding adaptation versus mitigation. Uh, while gathering terms, coming up with some common terms that um, each uh, community can understand and agree on, um, and aligning the research tools, technologies, uh, all of these things with some type of evaluation, way to evaluate uh, what's out there, and uh, gathering information about decisions and projects and resources that's available. <clears throat> Hosting the information, um, some information that uh, was brought up was uh, possibly white, white papers, uh, maybe having different diverse communities uh, writing white papers, and that would be some could be stored in the information hub, uh, maps, tools, that sort of thing. As far as distribution, <clears throat> media having um, uh, taking the information, putting it in a comprehensive form, and making it clear, and disseminating that to media outlets, and so that the. the in a way that we're actually giving them the information that they need to disseminate to the community at large and policymakers and uh, that sort of thing. Also, distribution globally for inf uh, information that has some global context to see, you know, how the other emitters outside of the U.S. are affecting us. 
Um, and then lastly, uh, the major thing that we talked about is looking at uh, a think tank versus a do tank. And so starting with a think tank, uh, creating some vision of what the future would look like with these targets in place and having CRI uh, be the hub that gathers all the, the, the communities together to create this integrated picture that we can start to develop an integrated strategy around. Um, and that vision to be a springboard uh, for the do tanks to take action. And so not that uh, the CRI is either one or the other, but that facilitates this type of uh, action. Some of the action items um, for the do tank is uh, uh, research and uh, different alternative energy opportunities because you have all these diverse communities coming together. There's projects that you know, different organizations and business communities and regulators are working on already, bring it, taking an inventory of what all that is and um, researching opportunities and also researching um, me methods of design and delivery of some of these strategies. So uh, that's, I hope I got everything. So Andy, I'm going to ask you to do water in just a second, but uh, Mariana, where are you? Um, the health, extreme weather. Ah, okay. I thought it was NSA, but. Um. Thank you. This one, right? Yeah. So. Um, some of the themes that we talked about, I think, have already been mentioned by the, by the other two, so that, that's maybe something emerging. There was um, part of the conversation was about what's the role of the Institute in terms of organizing academic research and, and making it available, um, communicating from the science and academic community to government and public sector and, and the public and to business, and uh, creating you know, multimodal dialogue, and also, um, thinking about how to organize and access the um, available academic research. And uh, the, the idea of kind of a marketplace of ideas that right now people make their decisions about what to research kind of from some random different, you know, where money is or what their personal interests are, but it doesn't necessarily add up to the kind of impact that might, if there were some kind of coordinating mechanism where people could see what are the, where, where are we putting our energy? and how to direct that better, perhaps. Um, and then also, um, to follow up on the do tank idea of d being able to demonstrate and model success and what works, what doesn't work, um, as, and as a place that people can go to, to see what, what solutions are. Um, one of the points that was made is a strong economy buys more resources for action, and also that um, most of the, a lot of the players in this space feel like they don't have enough resources, the cities don't have enough resources due to climate action plans, and the all these different groups feel resource constrained, but if you add together the resources we actually have, they're much more robust than they will be 10 or 20 years from now as climate impacts get worse. So I think we kind of take an inventory of all those assets and think about how can we leverage them more creatively. And then there was a, a large communications theme about how to engage multiple communities' um, viewpoints and the energy of the, um, the, maybe not as well represented here, kind of younger, um, groups from different kinds of ethnic uh, communities and from different socioeconomic groups and, and not just viewing people as, a, as victims of climate injustice, but also a source of energy and drive for getting the message out about climate action and choices. We talked about guerrilla marketing of, of impacts and success stories, um, how to get attention above the day-to-day -day worries that people face. And we also talked about ag policy and thinking about crop and pest strategies and how to um, take this knowledge and, and make sure that it gets actualized in the way business operates, in the way we run our farming and, and our other resources. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Andy, and then I'm going to ask Bill Quirk to give us a little viewpoint. Great. OK, well, uh, uh, just briefly, there was a, a focus on both the integration and, and collaboration in water analysis. Uh, um, People pointed out, and I think Grant, if Grant said, Grant agreed that that, that there was that there's been a real evolution over the last 15 or 20 years in terms of the water agencies of the region working together um, and collaborating, and there's going to need to be more of that. Um, 
uh, there was a, an interesting um, discussion about the need to have, and this was a theme that I saw too in the morning session and tied in the uh, flooding about uh, bringing together social scientists and physical scientists to generate uh, knowledge in CRI. In, in this discussion, it was about the public, uh, um, public acceptance of the reuse of recycled wastewater. And that that uh, Peter pointed out that you know this is just a huge supply of water, um, but we right now we don't really uh, we don't use it very well. There were several uh, the orange here several ideas for how um, CRI can what what role it it can play, and some of these are similar whether it's analysis. There was also talk about as well about this translation function, uh, how, how you bring the technical information out to the communities that use it. And um, uh, it's a, it's a uh, um, you know, the idea of ongoing communication, but it's, it's a, uh, uh, that's a very, very important topic, even when we, we, we have um, uh, generating the knowledge, getting people to understand it in a manner that allows them to use it is, uh, was uh, important. Um, uh, people, people thought that was an important point, um, and uh, uh, yeah, I guess both for both for uh, public education, but also to the education of um, policymakers and elected officials. So, so thank you, for you four, and and look, there's a lot up here, and and we were we are going to go back and digest all of this and and put it put it in a form that you can see it and we can start to see how could you operationalize uh, this work? How do we take these good ideas now that you've given life to, and and turn them into actual options for what the CRI would do? One of the things, and I, we haven't used the word much, but champions uh, are going to be so critical to this. They're, they are right there on every single thing that you can see that we've done uh, in the climate world in the Bay Area. There's been a champion or a couple of them. It may, t may have you know, 80 groups involved in something, but a champion is usually somewhere behind all of that. So when I first started poking into uh, various projects in the region to start our mapping a few years ago, there was this Hayward area shoreline project on, on sea level rise, and I was kind of curious why Hayward, uh, when other places weren't even talking about the issue. And the only answer I got back when I poked with Jeremy Lowe and some others around was Bill Quirk, uh, and, and now Assemblyman Bill Quirk. So I'd like you to come up and just give us a few, maybe, viewpoints from the state uh, and from your local work on, on what we're doing here. Um, well, first of all, I, I do want to say um, I think the CRI uh, idea is great uh, to bring everybody together. And what I hear in all four groups was the idea that there's tremendous expertise. And um, it's a matter of being uh, sort of the expert in the room, uh, but being able to communicate it in a way to policymakers but also to the general public. Uh, we will have this November on the ballot, more than likely, uh, something which the um, uh, legislature authorized, which is a um, measure to tax everyone in the nine counties, a parcel tax of about $10, you heard about this earlier, um, to do work for adapting to climate change. Um, we really need to communicate to the public that this is something very important. There will be all sorts of people voting, people who may not read the news, um, and having, um, an author having the academic institutes in this area uh, speak with one voice and think about the type of message they communicate. And again, I heard that from all four of these groups, communication, um, and communicating this in a way, I mean, I can, We'll have consultants probably working on this, and uh, I can bring them here to talk to you uh, about uh, messaging. So I think that's very important. Also, I'd like to say I have a big investment today. I had three staff members, uh, Carolina, Colin, and Ryan, uh, and Ellen was here earlier. Ellen, and Ellen is here from uh, um, Rich, Richard Gordon, Assemblymember Gordon's staff. Um, you know, this is a tremendous resource. I realize it, uh, we realize it, and um, you need to talk to us. Uh, you don't have to worry about throwing this out into the atmosphere and see if it'll be absorbed. Uh, I'm glad to talk to you anytime uh, when you've got ideas. 
Um, just let me know. Carolina sets my schedule. <laughs> Set it up with her, and uh, I will be glad to talk to you anytime. Uh, there was one other issue, which is an internal one to CRI, that Keith Gillis of the College of Natural Resources, my son graduated from UC Berkeley College of Natural Resources, so it's a wonderful institution. Uh, Keith brought up, which is, if you're going to have this happen, uh, department heads, deans have to allocate resources, um, tell the junior faculty and the postdocs this is a way to advance and, and have ways of encouraging people to do this. Um, but it's multi-talented people. Now, Colin, uh, he's got his PhD, he has his academic credential, uh, but he also has that desire to work with people like me and, and change the world. And, and there are lots of people out there who do have that ability. People are always amazed, how can a scientist be a politician? I was a politician before I was a scientist, at any rate. We all do politics. Academic politics, much worse than what I ever saw in the city council. <laughs> so we all do it. Uh, we've got to get out there. And uh, I, I'm really, I really like the idea of CRI. And I hope that uh, everything can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so um, we want a, a couple of our champions. Uh, Mark, where's Mark? Mark Richards, David Ackerley, Dan Miller, Bill Collins, you know, they've really um, helped get this thing going and, and, and brought it to the stage today. But as, as we've said all along, this is not just, this is not an event. This is the start of something. And so Bill's going to talk a little bit now, uh, and Dan as well, on, on, on where we're going and, and how this uh, basically is going to work from here. Good. Thank it's got you. it all figured out, I think. <laughs> yeah, just like the climate models. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was a laugh. That was a punchline. You know, so we're almost at the end of of today's formal proceedings, and then you'll have a chance to continue your conversations, uh, hopefully with some libations followed by food. I uh, have been asked to stress that we have a lot of delicious food showing up in the Magnus, and I think we're undersubscribed for dinner. It's going to start immediately after the reception. If you wish, you could have two dinners. Just sort of think of this dinner that's coming up. It's kind of like tapas, right? So it's starting at 5. Nobody will ever be the wiser if you show up at home with um, having had uh, dinner before your formal dinner. So <laughs> no, yeah, just be advised. Uh, really what I wanted to do is talk to you about next steps. And this is you know, primarily in a question of... of sort of laying a process so that we can grow the institute to include uh, all of the people beyond the universities in the lab who are represented here today, and to make sure that you're involved in how we launch this institute. So this is primarily a question of, of setting process, not making decisions, but the process of reaching those decisions is kind of critical. So the first thing we want to, and our principles so far with our member institutions, Davis, Stanford, uh, the lab have been that uh, once they agreed to partner with us, we've had open meetings, so they've been on, uh, invited to all the phone calls, everything else. We would like to extend that uh, courtesy and, in fact, engagement with the public and private sectors that are here, with the non-governmental organizations, um, so to make sure that all the decisions are made in a completely open fashion and in a way where we've had a chance to broach, uh, broach them with all of you and uh, look at them from all sides. The first step in this is, is to make sure that uh, the information that we've gathered here today is available to all of you. And so we will be getting back to those of you who've presented or, or spoken or given slides to ask for your permission. But um, our hope is to post as much of the material uh, to the web as possible. So this includes your presentations, if you give us permission, uh, certainly the video, the written materials. Um, and to gather all that up and, and make it available as a resource uh, very soon with very little editing. I think the, the next step, so we, and what you, we've heard today is that we have a, a lot of different ideas that are on the table. We need to begin distilling that information down again in a collective way, in a mutually agreeable way, to focus on some concrete projects that meet our two core objectives, which are action, in the broader community, I really stress action, along with 
uh, engagement with the university community and, its edu and the educational functions of Davis, Stanford, and, and Berkeley Laboratory and UC Berkeley. So um, we need to begin sort of a winnowing down process that I think will lead to a decision on next workshops. And as I mentioned this morning, we do have resources to have several additional workshops. Uh, I'm going to suggest, although this is just a suggestion on my part, that we think about having those workshops rather than as broad as this, as this summit, focus on a few core ideas that we collectively think are logical projects, one which, ones which meet these, these dual criteria. But that's just a suggestion. Uh, clearly, in order to get to that point, we need to have people who are engaged in winnowing things down. And that means expanding beyond the university community. So in order to move to the next step in terms of the governance of, this, of the institute, we need to engage partners from the non-government organizations, the public sector, the government, the business community. Um, and so we need points of contact from those communities. Um, that, that's points plural, but we need points of contact. At this point, the conversation among the universities involves a, a fairly small group of people, and we need sort of a similar model to engage with you know, the nine counties around the Bay Area. Uh, Bruce and I talked about this bef um, earlier today, and uh, Bruce has volunteered very kindly to work with the NGOs, the government sector, the business, and the public sector, uh, each of those four um, groups, to figure out points of contact uh, amongst those four sectors. Uh, if my university partners are willing, I uh, would be honored to s continue to serve as the point of contact for academia. Uh, and so we will. Uh, our goal here, uh, and I'm, I'm just putting this forward as a suggestion, but the, our goal is that we have an ad hoc council, and I stress the word ad hoc, uh, up and running in, in less than a month to move forward on really setting up a governance structure. And that ad hoc council will consist of the universities and points of contact from the NGOs, government, business sectors, et cetera. So we, we, need not to, we must not lose momentum. I'm going to suggest we sort of use an ad hoc structure going forward. Uh, we can discuss that if people think other, other modes of operation would be more prudent. But let's at least get everybody who's represented here uh, in a mode where we can exchange ideas and quickly winnow, winnow down to, to some promising lines of attack uh, going forward. Uh, and so the con the, this council will need to discuss on um, how to figure out governance. I'll come back to that point in a moment. Funding, we can come back to that point in a moment. Uh, the workshops, and uh, also very important, uh, a common strategy in communication, so that we're speaking uh, not necessarily with a single voice, but at least with a carefully orchestrated set of voices, um, because there will again be diverse points of view. But I think we need to figure out a, a communication strategy that's going to work, uh, that will get the message out about who we are and represent that in, in, a, in a, not a single way, but at least in a unified way to the broader community. So on the governance side, let me just, and I, we're now, I'm, I'm now eating into your time for the reception. So I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching my, my computer. This thing is equivalent to a Cray 2 supercomputer. It's synchronized to atomic clocks. I'm carefully monitoring the time. <laughs> Believe me, um, <laughs> I, I, I taught class this fall and my students laughed because I'm sitting here with this thing, which is like a, it is a Cray 2 supercomputer. It's as fast as one. And every, I, was, I had a choice between looking at this and the Berkeley clock tower. And without fail, I would look at the Berkeley clock tower to figure out how far I was along in my lecture. And then I'd look back at my class and they would all be grinning at me like, you know, well, anyway. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to think they were laughing with me, not laughing at me. Uh, on the governance side, I think what I would like to suggest is that we, the, the, each of the, just so you know where we are with this, we've broached this issue, we agreed to sort of get over the finish line with the summit and then come back to the governance side. We would very much like to understand from the, say, the public, um, public policy sector, from the uh, agency sector, if you have models uh, of engagement with the academic community or with other agencies that have worked, we would very much like to solicit in, in, that information. So we sort of collectively pool our thinking about how to set up a, a, an academic, uh, you know, community-wide engagement that's, that's gonna work. So we'd very much like your ideas. Um, on the funding side, um, 
I, we can come back to that point perhaps during questions. Let me, let me close then with this stage and just saying that we are going to move forward uh, by drawing all you together, uh, or representatives of you together in a council, and then proceed to identify uh, critical ideas for next workshops with the goal that we will uh, launch those, those, that workshop series this spring. Um, with that, I would like to close. Uh, thank Bruce again for all the work that he's done in orchestrating this. Also very much uh, like to appreciate uh, and uh, all the effort of the facilitators and thanks to the facilitators. Thanks especially, yeah, thanks to the facilitators. Um, and I was just gonna say the graphic recorders, I'm, I'm grateful that my wife is, is not here to see what can happen if someone puts their mind to actually writing neatly. So, but thank you so much for doing a brilliant job in rendering the, the output uh, and using uh, nine different markers um, in real time. So they're very impressive, thanks so much. So let's turn this over to, uh, uh, and, uh, pardon me. Final questions did, or comments? Dan, you had, a, Dan, you had, a, Dan, comment. you had a, I mean, you a comment? Yeah, this is last chance for today. <laughs> so for, first of all, I, I thank everybody for coming here. And I think uh, the process of getting so many different kinds of people in the room, the academics, the policymakers, and business, I think we saw today that there can be real things can happen, more can happen than if we work separately. The one comment I would make, and I know that we've had discussions about this before, is I think some of the things, sometimes we talked about what's gonna happen in 2050, you know, how can we get down to 80% reduction in 2050. I, I would impress on that, I don't think we have that much time to look. I think we have to look a lot sooner. We have to act a lot faster. There was some information at the very beginning uh, today where we saw what the temperature might be if we continue on the path we're on. And it's just a number, it doesn't mean anything. But if you take a look back in history, long time ago in history, when the temperature was that high, 70 to 90% of all life on Earth died. And that's the path we are currently on and trying to go sort of as fast as we possibly can, actually, which is kind of really crazy. So there's a sense of urgency that I would like to <laughs> increase. And, and, and we also saw that there's things we can do. It was really clear. There's, it's, there's things that we could do. There's things we could do tomorrow. And if, if we just keep on thinking about this problem like Social Security, you know, we're going to fix this thing. Yeah, it's going to be a real problem in the future. We better get to that. The thing that, that's unlike, climate change is unlike the other problems we face in that the CO2 lasts in the atmosphere for hundreds to thousands of years. So once it gets so bad that we want to fix it, it's already too late. So we got to act right now. I think we saw today that bringing people together can actually make things happen. I think we have to make them happen a little sooner than uh, some of us think. Thanks. Thank you. Nicely put. Yes. And, and we said at the beginning, and, and you're going to have to hold us to this, that we didn't want the CRI to become just another you know, piece on the, on the big, wide puzzle that it's got to make a real difference or it's not worth doing. So that's our pledge, that it's going to make a real difference. And that's going to mean strategically picking out if it's two things or three that we start with or, or one, whatever we, that we start with and lay out for the first uh, go round, they've got to be the right things. You know, we've got to be very good about saying no to some very good ideas and say yes to some things that will actually really make a difference. Other closing? Yes, Mike. So I, I actually have a comment. Thank you. So I have a comment, uh, and it builds on what um, Mr. Quirk said earlier. So um, there is a regional campaign underway right now. It's an education campaign on um, uh, the effort to raise monies and awareness about um, the risk for the region with regards to climate change. But I want to be clear about this. That's not the number one messaging of the campaign. So if you want to win the campaign, we're actually focused on the, the bay as a sort of the central feature of the region and the quality of life that we all associate with a healthy uh, San Francisco Bay. So there is a concern about the fact that we do need to focus more on that adaptation piece. And that as a region, while we may understand a lot about climate, we have very little understanding about what the impacts are. And uh, one of the things that I, I, I like to say often is, um, if you can quantify what the risks are and people start focusing on what the planning means and what's going to be the impact to their day-to-day -day lives, that actually helps the conversation around mitigation 
a lot, I think. So, yeah. Nicely done. Good. Thank you. Others? Yes. Mark, come on. You started this once you finish it off here. <laughs> I just want to point out Many people in this room were at one time graduate students. How many were at one time graduate students? Yeah. Then you're going to get what I'm about to say. There is no more efficient problem solving machine in the world than a Berkeley, Davis, or Stanford graduate student. And our students really want to solve problems. They they spend they become very well educated in the science of climate change and all sorts of related fields. But providing them avenues to feel like their science is having an impact and that they can be furthermore see career pathways to having lives that are meaningful in this way is very, very powerful medicine. And as this institute goes forward, I just hope people will keep that in, in mind. Uh, graduate students are the, our silver bullets. Uh, they're the cheapest way to get anything done intellectually. And, um, and, and I hope we can find lots of projects for them to work on. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else? Bill, want to wrap it up? You're it. Let's party. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much. Yeah, thank yeah. You.